So, we will move on to the uh, next uh, welding processes th that we have looked at you know in, uh, in introduction uh, to the welding processes used in automotive industry. Uh, so, we looked at in, in, in detail about the resistance part welding. So, resistance part welding has its unique characteristics uh, and it is used for uh, uh, the welding of uh, thin sheets of uh, uh, automotive steels. The other welding process uh, which is commonly used in automotive industry apart from resistance part welding is laser beam welding. Okay, so, laser beam welding uh, you know, it, it has its own advantages as well as disadvantages compared to resistance part welding and we look at in detail first uh, the, the working principles of laser beam welding and why we need or why we use laser uh, to uh, uh, as a heat source in the welding processes um, and in detail uh, the, some of the characteristics of uh, the, uh, the laser welds uh, that we make in, uh, in, 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 in automotive steels. Okay. We will move on to the, uh, the introduction about the laser beam welding. So, laser beam welding as I told, uh, 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 so we use the laser as a heat source uh, um, uh, to heat up uh, the work piece and melt and then form a, uh, a fusion joint. Uh, so, the laser we all know that it is in a very high intensity beam of electromagnetic energy. So, we uh, make use of uh, the electromagnetic energy, uh, the photons, uh, the light photons uh, 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 to um, uh, heat up the work piece. And how do we heat up the work piece? Because when you pass on a laser uh, uh, beam, uh, the kinetic energy of the photons in the laser beam uh, uh, is uh, the converted into heat energy um, in the work piece when they uh, get attenuated in the, in the work piece. Uh, so, energy density uh, of the laser beam is uh, extremely high compared to the conventional arc welding processes. Uh, so, uh, no, for example, uh, in, a, in a typical um, uh, uh, ND arc, uh, the ND uh, arc uh, laser source, um, the current density can vary from 10 power 10 to 10 power 13 watts per uh, square meter as compared to uh, the 10 power 6 to 10 power 8 uh, in arc welding processes. And, and because of the extreme uh, the energy intensive uh, the heat source uh, which is laser and the most of the welding process welding uh, we, uh, is carried out in a keyhole mode. Uh, so, keyhole what is keyhole it is extremely important to understand what is keyhole. Uh, we will explain in detail in, in the subsequent lectures. Um, so, keyhole is basically you have a full penetration. The weld is made uh, in, in full penetration mode. Uh, and because of uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the concentration of heat in a very, uh, uh, very narrow regions, uh, your, uh, uh, the fusion zone which you form uh, in during laser building also very, um, uh, very narrow and uh, the temperature gradient also is very steep. Uh, so, resulting in a uh, uh, narrow heat affected zone uh, um, and also as well uh, because of uh, the, uh, the uh, reduced size of fusion and heat affected zone and you may also expect uh, uh, minimal distortion after laser beam welding. Uh, so, these are the uh, advantages of laser beam welding and compared to the uh, conventional uh, fusion welding uh, processes. Um, uh, and the laser is also extremely easy to uh, manipulate. Uh, so, we can, uh, we can uh, uh, transfer a laser beam from one place to other, other place uh, very easily using an, an, a fibers and we can also focus it in various places and we can also defocus it to our advantage and we can also produce uh, the varying uh, 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 intensity uh, as well as the power uh, in a given source. So, these advantages you know they make lasers are uh, uh, attractive uh, heat source uh, for welding processes. Um, so, if you look at uh, 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 the various uh, uh, lasers uh, that are co commercially available. Uh, as I explained, you know, based on uh, uh, your intensity and the focal uh, point, we can either uh, do a welding in like keyhole mode or full penetration mode or in conduction mode. Uh, some of the applications uh, of lasers, suppose if you want just to do a uh, surface uh, hardening treatment or uh, you want to deposit uh, powder. Uh, using a laser source. So, uh, in that uh, case, you know, we limit the damage uh, uh, to the microstructure of the substrate uh, 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 to minimal level. So, in that case, you, know, you can also operate a laser beam in a conduction mode. Again, we will see in detail in the subsequent slides. Uh, so, you can also do a full penetration uh, uh, weld, uh, what we call it as a keyhole uh, welding. Uh, 
and there are uh, um, in, in, in by and large there are three or four types of lasers uh, that are commercially available. Uh, so, you must have studied in your, uh, in your physics or in, in your plus two uh, physics and uh, the types of lasers that, general, that are generally um, available. So, uh, I just studied uh, most common uh, laser sources that are uh, used in um, um, welding. Uh, and uh, the first is the gas lasers so like helium neon or uh, carbon dioxide lasers um, which actually produce uh, uh, wavelength and um, around uh, and 10 micrometer. Okay, so, in this case uh, we use uh, helium and neon uh, or carbon dioxide gas as a gain medium. Okay, so, what is gain medium again we will see uh, uh, in, in later subsequent slides. Uh, the most uh, the common uh, the uh, type of laser is a solid state laser uh, and where the gain medium uh, is made of uh, uh, ND arc. So, ND arc here is a neobilinium uh, yttrium aluminum garnite. Um, so, this laser is, is a very commonly used uh, um, uh, uh, type of solid state lasers uh, for welding industry which produces an monochromatic beam with a wavelength of 1065 nanometers. Okay. Um, and uh, the, uh, so, uh, apart from the, the gas and solid state lasers, we also have a diode lasers, uh, the various uh, 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 diode sources are possible to generate you know the wavelengths varying from 800 to 980 nanometers. Uh, so, uh, we can based on the your diode configuration, uh, we can generate uh, wavelengths varying from 800 to 90 nanometers. So, in the recent times uh, there are a lot of uh, science uh, and development went in to uh, generate very stable uh, lasers. Um, so, uh, the most uh, recent development in laser industries uh, to uh, develop uh, or uh, to generate lasers uh, using uh, optical glass fibers. Uh, so, the fiber laser for example, uh, uh, can generate uh, the, the wattage uh, which cannot be you know possible by conventional lasers. Uh, so, we have seen uh, uh, systems which can produce um, hundreds of uh, kilowatts of uh, laser power. Uh, so, the fiber laser generally you know has a uh, uh, wavelength of 15 50 nanometers. Um, so, it also produces very stable uh, light over the years though um, for uh, uh, high productivity uh, uh, jobs especially in automotive industries where uh, we, we, uh, if you have a laser welding uh, uh, applications the fiber laser can give very stable beam over the years uh, day in day out um, without, uh, uh, without losing uh, uh, its wattage uh, significantly. So, other type of lasers they have their life uh, time uh, based on the usage uh, generally uh, uh, laser shows deteriorate over time because of uh, the excitations we, we do to generate uh, uh, lasers. Okay, so, some fundamentals about the lasers. So, so this you already have uh, familiar with the uh, you already have uh, familiarity with these uh, diagrams. Basically, how do you generate laser? Uh, before going to that, we will also understand what is laser uh, signify. Laser is so light amplification. by stimulated so emission of radiation right so each word has is very significant meaning so in this case uh, the stimulated emission so what what does it mean here so we are so um, inducing an emission by the stimulation right so it is explained very simply so you have an electrons revolving around an, an, a nucleus of an laser medium for example, say you say an ND arc and we excite an, an the electrons from lower orbital to uh, higher orbital to an excited state and this uh, excitation is uh, by some st external stimuli uh, and the upon excitation so they gain energy the, uh, and when you, when you take the stimuli, uh, stimuli out these excited atoms come back to its ground state and releasing uh, a photon. Okay, so, the excited electron decays and emit a photon okay. uh, and uh, the stimulations can be you know carried out uh, um, either by uh, the electric source or any other light source. Uh, uh, for example, in the bottom figure uh, we have uh, uh, the same uh, diagram in the top in, in a different uh, schematic. So, we have a ground state electrons uh, when you have send a pump photon for example, it excites the electron to excited state. and uh, uh, once you take the foam photon out, um, uh, it, then it comes to a uh, metastable state and subsequently um, uh, it can also brought to the ground state releasing 
the, uh, uh, sub, sub, uh, the multiplying uh, the photons uh, which is actually known as uh, uh, laser. Okay, so, uh, if you look at an actual equipment you know, which is actually used to generate laser, uh, it is very simple and, uh, uh, which is actually uh, uh, used in uh, various applications. Um, so, one of the lasers uh, I am going to talk about uh, uh, today is the NDAC laser. So, NDAC laser as I had explained, uh, so the uh, gain medium, uh, the neodymium um, yttrium aluminum garnite uh, is actually used to excite uh, and uh, is used as an again medium that means that you know the uh, when you have a pump electron which is sent to uh, the uh, gain medium and you excite the the electrons of the gain medium and when the, these electrons uh, return to ground state they release uh, laser photons and these laser photons are all amplified and uh, uh, using an, uh, an mirror arrangement so for example you have uh, uh, gain medium is surrounded by uh, two mirror one is uh, completely reflective the other one is partially reflective so when uh, the gain medium is excited and you, you get uh, the photons release which are actually accelerated and uh, uh, gained in power by reflecting back and forth uh, from these mirrors two mirrors so the, uh, and uh, this partial mirror uh, the uh, sends uh, the excited uh, and uh, the uh, collimated and coherent laser beam upon uh, attaining its uh, required uh, power uh, to the uh, application. Okay. Uh, so, this is uh, basically an a schematic of NDR uh, laser source to uh, uh, mirrors which actually uh, 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 generates the laser uh, light and then it actually uh, sends to the uh, for example welding setup. Uh, the, uh, the, the laser gets its uh, the property which is uh, uh, highly coherent um, and this property the coherent laser beam uh, the, uh, e makes the laser uh, usable for various applications because uh, when, you, when the light is highly coherent uh, it never diverges uh, uh, when it travels to over a medium. Uh, and uh, the power can be transmitted from one point to other point when it actually travels uh, um, through a medium as well as you know it can also made into collimate um, and uh, uh, attenuate at a point by dissipating uh, its kinetic energy. So, therefore, we can use the lasers uh, very useful uh, uh, very uh, handy in various engineering applications. Okay. So, apart from India lasers. Uh, the recent development uh, in, in, in laser industry is uh, um, uh, the fiber laser. So, in fiber laser, uh, so we do not have a uh, 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 yeah, solid gain medium uh, and uh, instead of uh, a uh, 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 gain medium, uh, we have uh, the, uh, the glass fibers which actually acts as an uh, gain medium. So, in this case, uh, the excitation or uh, the uh, pumping is uh, uh, done uh, using an, uh, uh, yeah, so a laser itself. So, we generate a uh, laser using a uh, diode source and then this uh, laser it acts as an uh, uh, um, uh, the excitation source and which is actually sent to uh, an, uh, fiber, uh, the fiber uh, the glass fiber uh, cables and this cable is actually made of uh, 3 layers. Okay. So, the, uh, the uh, top layer is completely opaque and the middle layer is completely transparent. So, that when you send a uh, laser beam and it actually is get reflected and then made into gain its in, in, in power uh, in, the, uh, the, in, the, in, the, in the in the middle layer and then uh, uh, upon um, uh, gaining uh, enough uh, power uh, it is actually sent to uh, uh, the source uh, from uh, uh, pump source from uh, one end to other end towards the applications. So, the advantage of fiber laser is um, if you look at it you know, in the, the actual uh, the, uh, the, the schematic, the, the fibers can be made into uh, as flexible as possible as long as possible. Whereas, if you look at you know, the, the solid state lasers or gas lasers, the gain medium um, uh, there is a limit in uh, it, it is size as well as its flexibility. Uh, whereas, in uh, fiber lasers, fibers can be made as long as possible. So, you can also make uh, a, a extremely powerful collimated coherent laser beam uh, and it can also be transported uh, from the fibers because fibers can be flex made into flexible uh, and as well as you know, uh, it can be made as long as possible. So, we can generate extremely powerful coherent laser 
and we can also manipulate its path as well as you know we can transport the laser using fibers so much more easily than uh, using a solid or uh, solid state or carbon dioxide or gas state lasers um, uh, and uh, the uh, the life the excitation life of uh, gas and uh, solid state laser also limited because over the uh, time they also decay in its properties whereas if you use a fiber laser uh, you can uh, in enhance the life of the laser source uh, uh, much more compared to the uh, solid state or gaseous lasers so therefore the uh, the fiber laser because of these processor advantages is nowadays it's getting widely uh, applied in uh, welding industries uh, to generate uh, the very good uh, quality uh, laser beam uh, for welding applications okay so if you want to further detail you can refer some of the physics books so we don't to uh, go in a detail about the physics of laser excitations um, uh, and uh, the wave theories which is irrelevant for this course so the once we have a laser source uh, obviously we need to make an a welding setup so uh, this slide uh, shows an a typical uh, welding setup uh, uh, used in uh, one of uh, my earlier laboratories uh, in uh, in netherlands uh, so uh, so we had um, uh, an uh, ndiac laser okay so the ndiac laser uh, medium it's uh, the schematically shown over here so we have uh, one uh, so uh, uh, about uh, 10 uh, gain mediums made of uh, the ndiac uh, uh, um, uh, material and we generate lasers and these laser is actually sent to a uh, beam delivery cable okay towards uh, a uh, uh, welding uh, station so the actual welding station uh, uh, contains the optics to focus the uh, laser beam and so we have uh, the collimator lens uh, as well as the the mirror uh, uh, to reflect uh, the uh, uh, the actual uh, the vision what you see uh, to an, an high speed camera or camera or sensors so basically you know if you don't have the diahoric mirrors um, so we 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 can have a uh, simple collimator lens system to focus the lights uh, the laser laser which is actually coming from the laser source towards the uh, the well piece uh, using this uh, collimator as well as the focal length okay so uh, the collimator lens uh, uh, takes care of the the uh, divergence that may uh, happen uh, when the beam is delivered to the the work stations and the focal lens focuses uh, the optical uh, the laser optical uh, uh, rays uh, to the uh, workpiece um, so we have an a mirror assembly system in, uh, to in order to look at uh, the actual uh, uh, the behavior the welding behavior the well pool uh, uh, behavior during welding and using this uh, uh, mirror and we can have uh, an, an vision uh, to the camera as well and this is optional we do not need it in the conventional welding setup we have a uh, laser source and a beam delivery towards the uh, uh, laser optics and laser optics contains uh, one collimator lens and uh, another focal length focal lens and uh, so these focal focus length as I explained focuses the laser beam onto the workpiece and uh, so these lenses are all, all uh, mechanized for example you can also move the um, focal length uh, as well as the table also uh, most likely you know fixed with an uh, 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 CNC coupled uh, uh, machine and so we can uh, independently chain the, um, uh, the focal length axis as well as the uh, workpiece axis in order to defocus or focus the laser beam onto the surface so generally you know, if you have an, uh, a focused beam um, uh, with a uh, good wattage uh, for example uh, if you have an uh, say 1.2 mm thick uh, advanced size and steel so uh, you, you, by uh, using an uh, say uh, 1.5 to 2 kilowatts uh, uh, laser so you will have a uh, uh, complete full penetration uh, uh, to kilowatt lasers so you will have a complete full penetration resulting in a, uh, in a, in a keyhole uh, weld so a keyhole weld basically you vaporizes you vaporize uh, the your uh, material and form a keyhole uh, and then uh, surrounding regions you form a liquid metal uh, and uh, subsequently if you switch off the power liquid metal solidifies and uh, form uh, and the well pool so you can also use uh, uh, a laser in a conduction mode where in conduction mode uh, you don't really uh, send a full power for uh, completely vaporizing and forming in a hole through thickness hole so we uh, adjust the power or a focal distance in such a way that you just melt uh, uh, top layer 
or we may also even reduce the power where if you have an, an a powder feeder for example, you melt the powder and deposit on top of the substrate. So, you can either operate in a two modes in a keyhole mode or in conduction mode. In keyhole mode, well, you have an, a full penetration and in conduction mode you have a, an only the surface uh, heated either you have a melting in a, in a, in a local surface or you, you may also control the power such a way that you do not really uh, change the microstructure of the substrate and you just melt the feedstock uh, either powder or wire and deposit and that is actually uh, used in laser cladding applications. But in most in for welding applications in most of the cases we will be operating in a, a keyhole mode in order to make take the full advantage of the, uh, the process uh, you have. Uh, and a typical uh, the operating uh, wattage of an uh, laser welding used for a sheet uh, uh, thin sheets applications especially in uh, car bodies. Uh, so, the generally the laser uh, um, capacity uh, uh, change uh, yeah generally changes uh, um, uh, goes around say 2 to uh, 4 kilowatts ok. So, you can also have a more than 4 kilowatts, but for thin shield application for example, 1 to 3 mm. So, the 2 to 4 kilowatts of uh, wattage rating of laser is uh, sufficient to make a uh, complete keyhole uh, weld. Uh, so, apart from uh, so these we should also understand that the efficiency of this process is extremely poor that is mainly because of the absorption of laser uh, by the, uh, the metals and alloys. Uh, so, the laser absorption changes as a function of again composition. Uh, so, steel has a reasonably good absorptivity whereas, in aluminum has a very poor absorption for uh, laser. Uh, so, uh, so, most of uh, the time uh, when you uh, want to weld uh, aluminum alloys using laser, so you need to increase the wattage uh, significantly compared to the, the steel with similar thicknesses because uh, the absorption of laser uh, 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 aluminum in aluminum is extremely small. So, therefore, you need to increase the power significantly compared to steel, but even for steel the absorption uh, is very poor uh, as well. <coughs> so, the, the laser is considered to be not that efficient process because the, most of the lights, the energy you generate uh, they are all uh, uh, in a way uh, wasted. So, only a fraction of energy from laser is transferred to the work piece. Okay. So, we will uh, uh, we will go and look at in, in detail about uh, the uh, the various procedures involved in a uh, laser welding process. And before that I will just show you uh, a couple of videos of uh, a typical laser welding setup. Uh, so, the first video I will show you uh, 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 a laser welding setup in, uh, uh, in a laboratory in uh, Netherlands. Uh, it is where uh, we were welding a uh, trip steel uh, using a uh, uh, laser beam. So, the video is running already. So, what do you see over here? I will show you again. So, so this is your uh, the, the welding table where the x y is that the x y at the table. So, here uh, you have an work piece mounted onto an, uh, uh, on a clamp and this is our laser optics head. Laser is actually coming from uh, uh, the top floor to these optics. And the collimator lens and the focal length are placed inside these optics and this can be moved independently with respect to your x y table and z here is the uh, laser axis. Uh, uh, so, generally we have uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, focal length defined from your uh, the lens focus lens to the, the work piece and that can be changed based on your thickness used or based on the, uh, the uh, power you want to uh, transmit to the work piece. Uh, so, uh, generally we do it in, in a full focal uh, poisons. So, when you have a full focal poisons, uh, so based on the efficiency, so you have a maximum power transmitted to the workpiece. So, in this case, uh, so we, we look at uh, uh, the laser welding, the trip steel is actually mounted over here and we are doing a bead on plate welding uh, on this trip steel using the laser coming in. So, the process is completed uh, within a uh, uh, few seconds and uh, in this case we were welding. So, 
So, in this case we were welding a, a trip steel of 1.2 mm thickness. Uh, you would see the, the amount of heat that is actually transferred to the workpiece and we end up making in a, a complete penetration, a complete full penetration forming a, a keyhole in laser weld and we end up making a, a full penetration joint. Um, so, what we uh, showed over here is in a, in a laboratory setup uh, for uh, uh, to understand the, the actual uh, process and the stability of the process and we have also look at in, mo in, in most all the cases what is actually happening uh, inside the uh, uh, material when we melt and then we solidify. Uh, the important factors that govern the stability of the weld uh, in made by laser welding, laser beam welding is the stability of the keyhole. Uh, the house table is a keyhole, uh, so because that is going to determine uh, the the uh, the uh, quality of the weld as well as the appearance of the weld. If your key keyhole is not stable, uh, and you may end up uh, forming spatters or uh, uh, improper penetration, or even sometimes even undercuts. Uh, so even uh, if you have a very turbulent uh, uh, keyhole as well as in the weld pool, you may also trap uh, the uh, atmosphere gases and end up forming porosity as well in the weld. So, it is important to understand your st uh, the uh, uh, keyhole stability uh, and subsequently the weld pool behavior during laser welding. So, we generally look at uh, uh, the, uh, the keyhole using an uh, high speed camera and which is also used to you can also make use of uh, uh, the, uh, the videos which we get it to understand the uh, how the laser welding actually happens. Uh, um, uh, yeah, by in, in a keyhole mode. So, I am going to show you in a video another video. So, we are in uh, so we were uh, looking at uh, uh, the uh, the actual well pool and the keyhole during laser welding um, uh, in a laser point of view. So, for example, we mounted a, a camera and uh, using a mirror uh, we reflected uh, the sample surface onto a camera uh, which I showed you in the schematic. So, that we can look at uh, 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 the the, the work the, the well pool in, in the laser beams perspective. So, how laser sees the work piece, we can also see uh, your uh, uh, laser, laser beam uh, well pool in a laser beams perspective. So, what you see over here is uh, uh, again a trip uh, in this case a uh, galvanized steel is welded using a laser. Uh, so, in this case, uh, uh, so what you see over here the bright spot it is actually laser illumination. Uh, so, your uh, laser source is moving along this direction and so we have uh, a laser illumination and what you see over here at the middle of this illumination uh, is a hole which you formed by the, uh, the severe vaporization of uh, the substrate and forming an, a, co um, a complete through thickness hole and which is actually known as a keyhole. Uh, why it is known as keyhole? Because in the form of a keyhole in a door huh, for example, so the typical shape of the hole is something like this you form. So, this is the typical uh, shape of the hole what you form uh, it is the same as you have a door uh, uh, key knob. So, we are looking at an, an high speed uh, video of an laser weld and what you see over here as I will explain is laser illumination and this is the keyhole, and we are looking at in a laser's perspective. So, laser is coming from the top of this uh, image and going through uh, the, uh, the substrate. Uh, and uh, this illumination uh, shows uh, the actual exposure uh, uh, and reflection of the laser from the substrate. And what you see over here is the uh, keyhole what is formed um, uh, by the severe vaporization of the metal. In this case uh, the keyhole is not really stable, so the process is not stable. And the surrounding the keyhole you have a molten metal. Uh, which forms uh, 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 and a well pool. Uh, in this case, uh, it is a tear shaped and most of the uh, transient laser welding uh, uh, which is done into very high uh, uh, welding speeds. So, generally uh, because of the temperature gradient, very steep temperature gradient from the well central line towards the well uh, uh, surface, the well, the well pool what you form here is uh, most likely uh, in tear shaped. So, we have an a molten metal and this is the top and bottom uh, the substrate and it is the, the interface is molten and subsequently when you move the laser source and this 
uh, well pole solidifies and forming a fusion joint. Okay. So, we will uh, end up from here. So, we will have a quick recall. So, we looked at uh, the laser welding process. Uh, so, this is one of the most commonly used welding processes uh, other than uh, resistance spot welding and we looked at some fundamentals. Uh, we can refer some of the physics textbooks uh, to understand the, the, uh, um, the laser uh, generation and uh, uh, commonly used laser sources uh, that are commercially available, the gas based uh, solid state lasers as well as the, the fiber laser, uh, diode lasers and uh, so nowadays we are also generating uh, uh, the fiber based uh, lasers which are actually very attractive for welding applications because of the beam quality we generally get uh, uh, by the, the fiber. Uh, and then we looked at the schematic uh, of a laser beam uh, welding setup. Uh, so, we have also looked at uh, uh, in a video uh, the actual uh, laser welding setup in uh, one of the laboratories. And finally, uh, we also looked at an, an high speed video showing uh, presence of keyhole uh, and uh, the formation of uh, pool uh, by the, uh, uh, the laser source uh, in a joint. <coughs>